Hey guys, my name's Nate and I'm the Otter Outdoorsman. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my Day Hikers Survival Kit. Now, this kit is not meant for a day hike where you're going into a park that you could walk out in 30 minutes. Um, literally in any direction, you could walk 30 minutes and you'll be at a road. And you have a cell signal everywhere. This is more meant for if you're going into a backcountry where there's a chance that you may need some bits and bobs. Now the other thing is, remember, with survival kits, at least with my survival kit mentality when I build these, they're not meant to take over your entire kit. So if you're going deeper into the woods, there is not a tarp in here. There is a mylar blanket, but if you need a tarp, or you think you're going to need a tarp, pack one into your day pack. I wasn't able to fit one in here that I thought would be sufficient enough. So, before we dive into this and I show you all the cool stuff in here, I want to talk about the, the container. Containers are always the, one of the more important parts of a survival kit because you can't hold your kit in your hands like this and just walk out into the woods. That would be ridiculous. So this is the Hidden Woodsman's newest pouch. Um, he sent me this for a review copy, um, just full disclosure on that. Um, this is his newest product called the Hidden Woodsman Survival Kit, also known as Bossel's Pouch 2.0. I've seen it go both ways on his website. Um, I am not going to do a review on this yet, but there will be a review going on, on my website. Um, if you do want a quick review on it, please check out my podcast, uh, the February episode. We will be talking about this in our segment called The Gear Garage. Um, we'll also be talking about our survival kit mentalities um, with my co-host uh, Tom. Uh, if you are looking for where our podcast is, you can find it anywhere that podcasts are sold. Well, iTunes, Google Play, and Libsyn. Um, also on our blog site, blog.riverotteroutdoors.com. But I will be putting a review of this in the future, but we do talk about the contents of this. We both really like it, but you'll get a kind of a better idea of it. It's Tom's first reaction to it, my second hand reaction to it. Um, but let's show you what the contents are. Let's get going. So on the back, he has a Velcro panel. Um, so I decided to put one of his Velcro patches on here, and it said, not all who wander are lost. Um, and I decided with that mantra, uh, our token, uh, chair our token uh, mantra, remember the name, I'm remembering it off the cuff, so <laughs> please. Excuse me if I'm forgetting names properly, but um, I know who the author is. Just forgetting the name, I'm terrible with names. Um, I like that mantra for this because, well, half a survival is mental. Like, literally more than half a survival is mental. So it's a good idea to say not all who wander is lost and have that there. Um, but on the flip side, literally um, I have a front pouch and on that I have a couple bits of first aid nothing too major because I tend to also carry a first aid kit with me but in here I have a, a thing with some gauze some band-aids some alcohol wipes some drugs um, just some basics and I also have a mylar blanket um, I like having these on the outside pouch because it's easy to access um, and you know, first aid you should always be able to access first. Um, I do obviously carry a first aid kit with me when I carry this as well, but it's good to have some backups just in case something happens to my first aid kit or I go through all my supplies in my first aid kit. Um, I like having some backups. So then we can go ahead and open it up. It has a lateral, a lateral um, zipper that then opens it up like a book. And this is where we really get into a lot of the goodies. Um, and you can really see that you can access it. And you can kind of start seeing my priorities right off the hand. Um, right here, I have a ferro rod, just kind of a basic one that I had around my house. A lot of this was made from things I had around my house. So some of it may not be the best, some of it may be okay. Uh, some of the things I did order for this, but I really did just grab things around my house to put this together. Um, so I have a ferro rod, so I could have one of these. But when it comes to my survival kits, I always like having at least a couple methods of uh, fire starting. So I also grabbed my fire beaner that I have, and I threw it in here as well. I like carrying this with me, but I couldn't find a good home for it in my pack. So 
uh, having the fire beaner in there is nice. Um, but I ended up ordering one of these as well. The fire be uh, outdoor element makes a uh, quick start that actually can connect to the fire beaner. And then here, I was able to fit three of their um, quick start tinders as well. So I have three instant fires in this waterproof capsule. Also in the case of fire, I also have a lighter and a thing of matches in a waterproof container. So based off of this, if I can't get a fire going, something is wrong. I also have a Gerber Paraframe 2. Um, it was a product that I got in one of my Karen boxes. And I got a, it's a, it's a cheap anchor flashlight, um, but has basically three different lights and you can kind of cycle through them. One's a strobe. I'm not a big fan of the strobe, but it was cheap and it kind of came with it. So I don't really have a choice and it fits perfectly into the loops that he has here for gear organization. Um, on the center loop here, I've rolled up a uh, bandana, which is perfect. And that's what I have when you immediately open it up. So on one side, you also have a slip pocket. In a slip pocket, I have a deuce of spades. Um, I like to be able to essentially dig. Uh, for things just in case if you need to dig for wild edibles dig into your roots or Have something and this is a super light shovel um, If I need to be able to pry stuff open It's a nice little thing. I have around that I can basically just use to dig into things and pry open um, It's nice to have around and I can essentially just use it as an emergency tool uh, sometimes you never know when things like this would come in handy. I can also use it to move embers around or things like that. Um, so having something like this around, super, super useful. Um, to me, navigation is always important. So I have a mirrored compass and having that mirrored compass is so useful because also it works as a signaling device, if I can get this open, because I have a signaling device as well, just in case of an emergency. Um, I wonder if I slipped anything else in there, no. So basically in there, I just have a, uh, just a quick mirroring compass and a small shovel, just in case. I could probably put smaller things in there, but, at the moment, it's really all I have in there. It's within the zippered pocket that it really did shove a lot more in there. But we'll move on to the zipper pocket. So here in the zipper pocket, I have a lot of other items as well. Um, I have a chainsaw, a pocket chainsaw. I thought about putting like a product like my uh, a folding saw in here, but they all tended to be too big. So I put a pocket chainsaw on here. It, it's better than, it's not one of those small wire ones. It's literally one of those like bigger toothed ones. These ones are really good if you get the angle right. You can't really bind them up. You have to have them really, really flat in order for them to work. And when they work right, they work really, really, really well. Um, so it's good to have one of the, at least have a saw in, the, in there because then I can do some really good cutting. Um, I tend to carry a saw with me anyways, but having something like this, I could try and cut bigger pieces of wood. So, um, I like having water treatment in a lot of my survival kits. Every survival kit has a different method and this one has, because it's just easier, I have chemical water treatment. I have the two different, I have essentially the one that uses chlorine and then just the neutralizer. Um, I could throw away the neutralizer so I have uh, a little bit of extra space, but I like having the neutralizer so it kind of helps neutralize the taste as well. Um, but 
I like having a little bit of water treatment. I normally carry a bottle with me and you should normally carry a bottle with you so that's why I didn't put a container in here because I said this is here to supplement your kit not to replace your entire kit. I have some tea candles. Weirdly enough, my uh, grocery store had a, like a pack of 50 of these for a dollar, and I ended up steal like it was a steal. Um, I didn't literally steal them, but it was a, it felt like a steal. So got a bunch of these for like a dollar. So threw some of these in there. Really good. I can either use them as a fire starter, or I could use them for um, actually just as a light, just in case. So I have a trend in all of my survival kits. Um, I have a fishing kit. I have a bunch of just fishing line. And this time I decided to throw into this one because I thought it was easier. It's just a card with some um, hooks and flashers and stuff like that. I'm not the best fisherman out there. Also has a saw on it as well. But I'm not the best fisherman, but I always like throwing a fishing kit in there just because um, where I live in New England, there's usually a pond somewhere um, or some form of way of getting fish. And it's probably the best way for me to get meat rather than trapping or hunting. I'm not much of a hunter, I'm not much of a trapper, but I, if anything, a way of getting a calorie collection fish for me would be the best way of getting protein rather than hunting if I wanted other than bugs uh, fish would be the best thing for me because I can I can generally get bugs um, so I could probably get fish so I just keep a fishing kit in there um, as always I like having some rope and I figure I with the rope and the chainsaw I can try and combine something. I can combine something into there with to make some sort of device that would make it work better if I needed to, or I could just use a saw as is. Um, and that's effectively it for this pouch. Um, all fits in there pretty well. Um, as I said, this doesn't supplement everything I have in my pack. I tend to carry a bigger knife, or bigger for me, because I tend to carry a three inch knife. Uh, <laughs> I tend to carry a fixed blade myself, most times. Um, but again, I carry like a three inch blade myself. But this is a lot of backup stuff, a lot of backup fire starting methods. I have a lot of just extra things that I could use in case of emergency and it all packs down decently. And it's about, it all packs down, though it is pretty heavy, and it packs down to about two pounds. So I could lighten this down, and it's about the same as my prototype survival kit, which was more meant to be a kayaking uh, survival kit. So this opens up a lot easier to access it. My other one that's in a Vargo bot, it's about the same weight, but I'll talk about that in a moment. So let's get reset up in just a second. So this is effectively the hiker survival kit. As, as I've said multiple times, this is not meant to replace your entire kit. That is how my survival kits work. If you ever watch any of my survival kits, these are not meant to replace your packs. If you want a tarp, throw a tarp in your pack because you won't want in case it rains. But this is not meant to replace that. This is more meant to be there in your pack in case things happen. This is there in case your day goes bad. Um, so that's kind of what this is meant for. Uh, I've made some other ones. I have one that's made with a Vargo bot. Um, that one's more meant for like being near the water or be, for water sports like kayaking, canoeing. That's meant to be attached to your body. That one, the difference between that one and this one, if you've watched that video, essentially the difference between that one and this one is this one is meant to be opened and closed and carried as is. Whereas that one is meant to be attached to your body and then when bad stuff happens, cracked open, dumped out the Vargo bot into the pouch and you're good to go. Um, kind of like a, uh, like an emergency flare, just it's, you're open, you have everything you need, and it's all dry. Whereas this one, it's more of meant to 
well, I'm in this situation. Uh, I need to start a fire. Zip, I have fire right away. So that this one's more of meant to have things at the hand. So this one would be more likely to be carried um, in a survival situation. Um, I will try and include as many of the items in this uh, down below if you're interested in any of the products that I included in this uh, or if you want to check out any of the products online. Uh, just heads up, most of them are Amazon affiliate links, which does help support this channel. Um, most of them, not all of them, because some of the products aren't sold on Amazon, um, including the pouch. The pouch. Um, but I want to say uh, thank you to Mel for sending me this uh, pouch, and I will try and get a review out on this one in the future. Um, if you are interested in seeing what my kit mentality is, there's a couple of it, there's a video out on that, and also again check out the Wilderness Wanderers podcast. Uh, it's, again, where most places where podcasts are sold, and check it out um, also on my blog site. Uh, links are always down below to that. Um, but anyways, my name's Nate and I'm the Odd Outdoorsman. This has been my uh, Day Hikers Survival Kit. Uh, and you guys have a good day. Remember, get in the woods and have some fun. See everyone.